so this is uh, just um, a motivation talk um, but apart from that i'll 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 cover some of the projects that we are doing here they are more of a research projects and i understand that you have come from different in universities or institutes so because of this academic inclination i would like to display some of the projects some of the research projects that are going on and um, uh, probably in the future you would like to do your higher studies so you may you may think in those directions what type of uh, areas are possible and and you can uh, you know you can link to your existing work that you are doing right now so you'll be you'll be working on projects right so what is summer internship okay so i would like to define summer internship as a course you must have had courses right courses subjects yes so so what do you do in courses normal courses you actually keep on asking questions you like to know the subject much better so when did you understand that course is a course so when did you understand when you take when did you understand that uh, a course is a course a course is a course and after taking that course you know what that course is or you know well before in advance what that course is so there are two different things before taking a course you may have a very vague idea right of that course but after when you finish it you will have a proper idea so summer internship is like that once you finish summer internship you will understand summer internship okay so all of these things uh, you know when you take a course like programming so what is programming what is artificial intelligence what is discrete mathematics there are thousands of courses so when you go to a class first day a teacher gives you an introduction so in the introduction not everything is clear am i right or wrong or everything is clear in the introduction and then you say i don't want to attend attend directly the uh, exams so introduction some things are clear not everything so you are trying to think that this is a course is something like this oh so this is part of say computer science this is a part of electrical part of mechanical but when you finish the course you really understand it but go and look at the first class that first introductory class uh, what the faculty must have narrated introduction so then then you actually understand you don't understand uh, unless until you go and look at the introduction you will understand what this course covers so it's like saying uh, if i am reading a book i finish reading a book okay there may be different ways of reading a book maybe Uh, serially or you randomly choose a topic so different ways the writer or an author normally has written a book in a particular fashion so when you finish reading the book you go and read the introduction <laughs> right so now you understand this and there may be many books which are very uh, which are like in the same area like discrete mathematics four five different books but then each of them will give you something different because that's the way the author works okay so i would say what is what <laughs> now if you are able to answer what is artificial intelligence after going through a course for 6 months and i think that what you have used in your life for how many years 20 years so what is the meaning of that i am confused even even i am con confused today so what is what anybody sorry uh, some dictionary say i think webster and all those oxford dictionary they say that interrogative way of asking questions 
even why is also like that how is also is like that okay in fact in fact this talk actually what i'm giving you today is is a for 6 months actually i was thinking what is what and over for 6 months actually this is the out you know outcome of that 6 months and for 6 that only 22 slides only 22 slides for 6 months only 22 slides so you can understand it's very difficult <laughs> so i would say it's the most important axiom it's difficult to define how many people are from computer science all i have to run away so i would say it's uh, have, has anybody heard godel's incompleteness incomplete, theorem has anybody taken formal logic no okay so then i think i should use this or i can just tell i don't want to use any so you have a language l and then you have a set of axioms on that language so you define theorems based on those axioms and an existing hypothesis that you create for a particular problem solving or whatever so you have a language the very simplest way of understanding godel's theorem is that you have a language and then you have a set of axioms on it and then you have theorems which are based on the on the axioms actual base axioms axioms the fundamental thing that defines a language now if you want to define if you want to actually prove any axiom within that bound of a language you will not be able to prove it so what do you do you define a higher subset of a language l dash now these axioms these axioms of this language l becomes a theorem theorem in that language because it's a super superset sorry superset not subset superset so and then your new language l1 will have new axioms and those axioms you can still not prove in that new language also so what is like that i think so but how do we understand it i had a case when i was small so somebody i mean when uh, kids you know small i was also kid but so there was an exam and then um, uh, somebody i mean the question question or some something to do with why or what what is something something so person wrote an answer to how is something something have you come across something like this so if somebody asks you what is this and you say how is this <laughs> right so i was i used to i mean i i was thinking that uh, maybe the person doesn't understand what properly or maybe maybe you know there's some the person doesn't perform well something like that but now it's so clear that the meaning of what was not understood and how do we understand the meaning of what is occurrences of answers to those questions that you, and i i i think i don't know what um, so you are told to by heart something right when you are small so maybe that's helping what so you are question you know you have a what is something your answers answers the answers you know if you, if somebody answers somebody can find a question to it right and all of those answers the pattern in which they are answered are the same for what for how for why the pattern is the same so i i say if i can say that this is a pen drive i can even say what is it not and i can mathematic if you go in a formal way of defining what is this i can even say what is this not right everything that is there in this world 
is not this. If I consider this unique in this world. So I consider these formulas very important. What and and oh so the, sorry, this is and you have not taken formal. I don't have much. I have um, I, I don't have much formal logic or anything like that. It's just a simple formula. This is and. And this is not. Not of what. So these are the two formulas. You may find that your knowledge sometimes tells you that it is like this. But over a period of time, somebody tells you something, and then you say, "Oh no, it's not like. Oh, now it is like this." So knowledge is changing every time. So what not is coming there? So how it is changing? You know, today you say that this is this, and then you don't define it. You say that it is something like this, abstract. And then as you go ahead, you find that it's becoming concrete and concrete. Now you understand it much better. so some of the some of the things get transferred from here to here and then you understand what actually is it boring no so it's a very funny thing so there are fundamental axioms in life six wives one husband there was a story there were six wives one husband so they were named by that those words and uh, they used to fight all the time naturally six wives one husband <laughs> but the husband would always say how wife one of the wives would say what why which who what you know all of them they only ask those questions they are not allowed to ask any other question <laughs> any other type of so ah, one is missing <laughs> one is missing na huh? where is she <laughs> one wife is missing <laughs> okay so in fact it's not a story i i created the story for the talk <laughs> so they used to keep on fighting 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 how how is this no you tell me how <laughs> some other person would say what what is this which is i mean who and all of those questions and questions and in research you actually ask questions like this so you keep on asking so that you infer something from some you will not get knowledge at only one time you will get knowledge many times and then you take 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 and then you put it together and that becomes your core knowledge even in life is the same it's not different so that's my title actually what and not not of what universal paradox circular oscillating and self referential i did not put it on the first first slide because instead of sitting you people might run away okay so why circular now i'm getting algebra right in to see why it is circular and self referential so i need, i'm trying to now define circularity a simple example seven standard eight standard ninth standard example so x square plus 1 oh that is square x square plus 1 equals 0 so x is equal to minus 1 upon x do you agree yes or not yes and i don't want to solve it the way the mathematician solve it so i'll solve it in slightly different way so in this case if i want to get a value of x i need to put in the value of x so i put 1 i get minus 1 if i put minus 1 i get 1 <laughs> am i right the paradox mathematical paradox 
algebraic products. So I would say it's same as imaginary. I think you have, must have guessed it is imaginary i root of minus one or whatever. So I I say what is like i. To get the meaning of that what is like i. This as well as this. But you should know what to put where. So another example I can give you, I, if you want to know what is circularity, there's I, I put on the re, in the reference one and four, so you can you can see at the end I will show the references. But I will mention that uh, there's one uh, monograph. Uh, you must have heard of art of computer programming. Yes. Yes. Hey, art, art, art theory is an art. You are an artist. Puzzle solving, putting things properly. If a puzzle is having five solutions, then you are gone. If a puzzle is having only one solution, you are happy. Art. Okay, so so in the in the index, you go in the index. And you will find you have to read only index, nothing else. So don't read anywhere where is circular definition. He has mentioned circular definition, but he has not explained anywhere. So you go in the index. Do you know what is an index? And end of a book. So go to the index and find circular definition. Circular definition. S E E C. S E E S E E C dot D and then then go to C dot D and you will find S E C circular definition. <laughs> so authors write in a very different fashion. Actually he is a great great person actually. He has won a Turing Award and is his name is Donald Donald Knuth Knuth must have heard of Knuth Art of Computer Programming three volumes only read the first volume <laughs> so I say sir like imaginary and circular imaginary as in minus one root of minus one. So you, you really don't define it in this world. I mean, there is no meaning for root of minus one, but they are used heavily in, say, digital signal processing and all those. You know, different different theories use root of minus one to effectively do something better with that. So, I think I'm, our mind cannot think so much, right? I heard that uh, there's some theory, uh, attention theory. Attention theory, uh, it says that you can do three, uh, you can do two things at one time. Two things at one time is possible. Not more than that. So you're always limited by whatever is there, you know, the real life limitations are there and you have to be confined to that particular environment and within those that confined environment you have to go ahead and do something. Can anybody see seven dimension here? Seven dimension. I cannot see seven dimension but I, I want to know if anybody can see higher dimensions. So I'm just establishing connections. So it's imaginary with respect to real values. That is imaginary with respect to real world knowledge. Phi. Oh, phi. Phi is same as what? Actually, I am representing phi as any any word that appears in your dictionary. So this is still an open problem. Nobody will be able to solve it in another 1,000 years. So references. Um, I forgot some formal logic. Some I forgot. 
always have been forgetting this this <laughs> my paradoxes are important just now we saw it was a paradox right what and not and what <sighs> you know of poetry when you hear poetry you like it is there is there anybody who can give me one phrase of a poetry which is having a paradox and i am sure there are many which i will display what do you people do you do computer science or <laughs> computer science people are not taught poetry <laughs> paradox but what happens we like it is a paradox like it but if you present it nicely you would like it right <laughs> if i am saying i am here i am still i am not here you may not like it so this is what brook says this contradictions are inherent in a poetry and in our feelings that if those contradiction did, didn't exist if this contradiction never existed then you would have not formed that base for you know getting the feelings out of of a person and they are very important in poetry but not in computer science so what we have to do we have to take paradox paradox paradoxical things and convert it into a real world phi formula five phi is a formula so that's why we have the best poetry best of the poetry that we have today so paradox our sweetest songs are those sorry our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thoughts <laughs> is it possible is it possible i think nobody likes to respond is it <laughs> in the class also you do the same thing look at the professor smile at the professor and <laughs> the second one the first one francis thompson i come back to where i have never been i shocked i was shocked and i saw this <laughs> how it is possible it's a paradox but you like it yeah that is the problem you like those things which are paradoxes even me i love i love this so i don't think we have evolved programmatically like the way computer programming is program is written so but we have evolved with inferencing things you know we deduce we deduce inferences from whatever we hear and we also know what what are fallacies in those inferences we deduce even fallacies but it's hard to change when paradoxes are around around us and if you find a poet friend of yours it will be more difficult you may accept everything i don't know so i say understand the importance of 6 w's and 1 h so that will tell us what is what and what is what not i mean what is it not so if you have been able to pose say uh, the only way of knowing what what the meaning of what itself or meaning of how meaning of any of these things you take the help of others to pose a question you pose question you take the help of others to understand something understand something else so like this you build your knowledge on those six w's and one h only yes you get knowledge only when you ask questions you don't get knowledge when you take knowledge from others 
You get knowledge only when you ask questions. So don't take these things which I tell you because this is meant for like um, this is my way of looking at it but your way may be different yes and of course you may have a better way of doing things so you ask questions you ask questions and you ask you probably you don't get answer from anybody but then that question that you ask is so important that it rings in your mind every time it will ring is okay no oh impedance or what <laughs> carrier wave is there i think carrier wave. so modulation is not problem so asking questions are fundamental things and that is what and it's not easy actually that is a problem even in iit bombay it's not easy so we say that we ask question but many people don't do it you feel shy because somebody will say that oh what lulu question is this so that's why you don't ask questions it's very sad so i just read out this actually i have given this talk many times for mtech students and others so much of the things are same and the, you must have seen there is no date and there is no uh, there is no date there is no title so that talk can be given anywhere <laughs> it's a very generic talk it can fit anywhere so in turn you will be able to learn those and be able to understand how we learn and asking what why this where actually you and you learn from all this which may motivate motivate you in doing problem solving that's how you solve problem have you ever defined a problem any problem how do you solve a problem i give you a problem i have to design a traffic controller for iit main gate outside because traffic is so heavy how do you design it traffic controller computer science problem it's not electrical problem computer science problem i need to design a traffic controller from a computer science point of view how would you do it how would you formulate a problem i mean you have to formulate a problem first so you have to ask question how many traffic lights you want one light two lights three lights how many roads are there what is the width of the road how many vehicles can pass through questions questions somebody will answer you have to hunt for it and what is what is that you want to achieve, achieve by doing that there must be some objective behind every problem solving there is an objective there are constraints i cannot it cannot have a 100 100 uh, what 100 meter wide uh, road maybe not possible i have a constraint i have 3 meters or say 6 meters wide road i cannot design more than that there are constraints how do you do that another way of looking at a problem is not just solve a problem but related to something else which you already solved i can very well relate the traffic problem at the main gate you have seen main gate right iit bombay main gate outside very difficult i can relate this problem very well to the connections between wifi and the tablets so it's like saying there are two islands there are two islands i have a bridge in between an island two islands i have a bridge in between an island and this bridge allows me to to send only this much nothing more than that and i have to have green and red signals both the sides see how how you re you re relate problems that's how you capture constraints of a problem and then objective function may be different 
but the constraints capturing helps you when you relate two different things even nature nature has given us lot of things so be very wide when you uh, look at something it may be civil engineering but you it may turn out to be a computer science problem anything so it won't be different than doing phd or m m check i believe this is solving any problem even for that matter life also will be same right so you get married and fighting in the house kids are there optimization problem constraints but i don't think if you start writing down those constraints when you get married <laughs> you'll have more problems <laughs> either your wife is safe so i have motivation for using 6 w's and 1 h i seek i kept 6 honest serving men they taught me all i knew their names are what and why and when and how and where where and who rudyard kipling much i heard but he did not do computer science was a poet writer everywhere it is used everywhere and you have to use what where how so i started framing my own way of looking at what and how and where so you need 6 w's and 1 h along with their complements not a good one but i tried how do you achieve perfection take the help of 6w and 1h only of course take help of other people but use it properly so simple way to understand what i mean i mean any of this i mean how to achieve perfection is just write a sentence on anything anything that has happened you know or maybe newspaper the way you write in you know, i mean uh, there are writers newspaper writers you can just start writing anything and then keep on changing that till it is perfect and you will find that english sentence is the way you write there will be a lot of ambiguities in that and those ambiguities lead to such paradoxes so you have to remove those ambiguities by framing continuously framing you know iteration 10 iteration 100 iteration so it's not that you are wasting time but you are learning you are learning you you would know how to put comma somewhere you know how to put something somewhere it will be equivalent to saying you know how would how would you put a semicolon in your statement c statement so this is how perfection works perfection you don't get perfection by just taking knowledge and just doing things no have to if i do something i i actually rewrite a program suppose i write a program i rewrite the same program again or if i design something i i redesign it i keep on doing that till i feel it is okay you have to continuously do that so this is just the outcome if you do it now tomorrow also will be same it won't be different so i i have used uh, here uh, this is system dynamics actually i used uh, poetry i have used uh, formal logic i have used algebra and i have used system dynamics this is a clear a clear is clear clear right so in system dynamics you have so there are two species i give an example there are two species you plot two species on x and y coordinates the only two species in this world this scenario 
so both of them eat each other so how the graph would look like if both of them live on each other so one species eating another species this species is eating this species how the graph would look like how it would look like graph so when a certain species is eating other species they are going down right now they don't have anything more to eat so anything more to eat so they will die so when they die these people when they die these people increase right so when these people are dying now because they don't have more to eat so when they die this the species die they increase here right and and now they eat completely eat this species is completely this species because there are more in number so now they come here now they will die because they don't have food to eat so this will be like this so it's a ellipse it's an ellipse so there are three things i i got this from my professor so i mean um, your hard work enjoy and play the three things that i i like to do so hard work because you have to do some some work then it's up to you whether you have to do hard work or not and then enjoy because or oh play play first no enjoyment first play burn your calories and then enjoy because all this this all three are very important two of this is not a choice so you have to do all three and i have plotted it using system dynamics the way as i told you give an example the ellipse if you keep on doing very hard work you will not understand this because you will not be able to relate to some other area like for example i i love spending time with uh, chemical engineering students or some people who are doing research in chemical engineering some people doing research in medical some people doing research in psychology some people doing research in history so i keep on talking to them so i ask them what is the problem what is what is the challenging problem there what are different challenges that you have so it so happens sometimes that you will find a solution maybe not in your area but you will find a solution somewhere else and now you have to take that solution and get it here that is research so i i keep on talking you know so and then uh, you cannot just do hard work only in one area just you will go mad so you have to enjoy you have to play also so while playing also you may get some problems which you relate it to your work of course there will be a solution there may not be a solution also but at least to identify a problem that there is a problem somewhere you can see that two different areas are how they are meeting each other you know two different areas so that is the analogy that you follow so this these arrows which are there they tell you how fast you should go and how slow you should be going and if you do it much faster you may not and then there are uh, you play if you do something the, this is my fundamental thing i i believe not necessarily everybody should believe so if you do something i understand and when you say i understand i start liking it and then i start liking it i'm doing it again and i understand more so that's that's a normal process many people tell me uh, i i don't like mathematics many people say i don't like mathematics i don't think they don't like mathematics they don't understand so they have not been able to reach here and then they don't like it actually i have been liking almost everything now so i i read almost um, maybe medicine sometimes sometimes physics sometimes chemistry or any anything that i get to read and i can see how much computer science is closer to any of this than in computer science so this is a one day cycle not necessarily you should follow it 
and I have not been able to follow this also. <laughs> it's very difficult. So, how do how do you think critically? And why you should be thinking so critically? In fact, I will not uh, answer why. But I will say I will I will actually give a reference from George Polia. Only the only the main headings are important here. If you want, you can you can I may put it somewhere. So this this is one of the things which are more important when you are actually trying to solve a problem, any problem, even a programming problem or any 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 problem. So George Polia is a great mathematician, and that's how I mean. He has been able to, you say, understand the problem first, properly understand it. So you ask questions there. What is unknown? What is the data? What is the condition? Is it possible to satisfy the condition? All of these questions, you know, different types of questions. So you understand the problem properly. And then you devise a plan based on what you understood. And then you see, could you restate the problem? Or is the third, fourth point here? Here is a problem related to yours and solved before. So somebody has already solved a very same problem. So it may be in bio life sciences, maybe in medicine or any anywhere. But can you use it? That's the first thing. Can you use it? You don't reinvent the bill. Otherwise. Uh, you will not be in 2012. You'll be in 1990. For example, if I if I go in a jungle and I or a person who has never seen city life or any 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 of this outside life, not exactly city life, but a person who has never seen anything, he's in a jungle and then he invents a bulb. He comes out of the jungle and says, "I invented something in 2012." What will happen? What will happen? That is the problem. Don't reinvent anything. Use first, and then you see when something is not available, then you invent. It's applicable everywhere, and then you do you know iterations and iterations. You know it's not easy. It's difficult. You see hard work, a lot of hard work, and then you carrying up of the plan, and then you look back. The whole of iterations. So I think I, I'll stop here. Yeah, that is better, so that uh, you can continue with your technical discussions. And I actually wanted to show you show some of the uh, projects actually, just over a glance as what we are doing. So mostly, I in fact uh, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, and I do and I understand. So if you are in either, if you are completing all these three, that is great. So these are the references. So these are the list of projects. I'm just showing you because uh, you know some of them have already been going on. So they are in some virtualizations, and I'm just showing you because you are you have that academic inclination. You come for to do something. So I'm not saying you take these projects and leave those projects. Those projects are important. These are fairly complex projects. They they take you at least one year to solve each of these topics, and we have been working on, uh, you know, virtualizations, then um, you know, P2Bs, that is, physical to virtual, resource allocation, um, databases, then e-learning. So they're very broad, actually, they're very broad, and then big data. How do you handle? And uh, big data like using Hadoop. You heard of Hadoop? Hadoop, big table. Google. Have you heard of Google? Uh, Facebook. Oh yes. <laughs> so big data, no? Very very big, huge data. So how do you handle all this? So issues, problems. So there are research problems. So scheduling, real time scheduling of wireless communications, then protocols. Performance analysis, application, educational applications, 
and then some energy efficient applications. So these are very broad areas that that we look into. There are almost like 20 different, almost 30 different students are working on this in our our group actually. So and if you find like you know something is very close you know like you can always um, talk to the students they will tell you better I mean because they have been working on such and then if your project is coming very close to something uh, that you need help they are always available you know. Okay. So I stop here.